Greetings in our Lord and our Blessed Mother. Raphael X here with another video. Please subscribe, click on the like button, share this video, leave a comment, notifications, all that good stuff. Let's start with a prayer before anything else. In nomine Patris, et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita tu mulieribus e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, with our mother's care, um, it's been a while since I've done a video. I wanted to do this video precisely because what is going on in New Jersey craziness regarding uh, a new implementation of education in the great or not so great state of New Jersey where I live. So I feel obliged to do this video. It's been a while since I did this video. I'm going to try to do more regular videos and um, even up the scale of my YouTube channel, which is kind of amateur to say the least. But anyway, all right, so, um, <coughs> excuse me, I um, definitely want to talk about the transgenderism and how they're instilling that in our kids. So some sick nihilistic people would think that, um, well, these people with no morals or values, they would think that this is a merely political issue, right? If you don't believe, like many postmodernists don't believe in a universal moral standard, everything is just even moral values or expressions of positions of power, the power structure, what have you. It all comes down to politics, right? And people who think that all moral issues are merely political, be careful with those people, right? Sick people, sick people. So New Jersey now, this is going to start in September, uh, the school year 2022-2023. This was decided a couple of weeks ago. I know teachers who are going to be trained in this Public school students as young as 10 can be taught that puberty blockers are an acceptable way to manage, quote unquote, manage puberty and that masturbate and that masturbating a few times a day is a healthy way to relieve stress, according to sample lesson plans being reviewed by state school districts. Again, man is just a mere body, right? Let's satisfy the body. Let's change the body yet, right? According to our whims, the body is no more a symbol of God's plan. For our life, that God reveals in the natural realm what I ought to do. My body as a man makes no sense without the female body and vice versa, right? All that is gone. I totally manipulate my body. If I have a, you know, interior difference with my exterior genitalia and actual biological sex, that's normal. And all of this craziness, let me just close this email browser here. So it's absolutely absurd, right? There is something definitely wrong if your uh, gender expression, gender identity, which is something that didn't exist you know, two days ago, if that doesn't conform to my biological sex, there's something wrong. Right? And the APA has, uh, has said so a couple decades ago. They changed right due to political pressure. Um, the American Psychics, uh, the Association of Psychics of America, some APA, I forget exactly what it stands for, but a legit group of uh, psychiatrists and slash psychologists. Today, their fields are being blurred. A lot of psychologists are acting as psychiatrists. But um, yeah, this is, this is, this is, they're acting on pure politics, not us. Let me just be straight that my intention is charity, is truth, is not to, you know, throw... Uh, in the face of people, my views, right? To impose my views. No, the charity, right? We cannot bless people in their falls, in these errors. These people need help. These people need help, right? We don't want to justify uh, disorder and sin. New Jersey public school students as young as second grade will be getting lessons related to gender identity under state sex education guidelines that will take effect in September this coming school year. Multiple sample lesson plans, which were given to parents at the Westfield Board of Education February 22nd meeting, at that meeting, appear to be reflective of the state's new broader sex education curriculum. It's absolute madness. I saw some of those amaze videos and a normalization of everything. Right, uh, pu uh, pu as I said, a uh, puberty block, puberty blockers, normalized. Um, you know, uh, 
gender disconformity normalized the basis of everything masturbation normalized everything right uh, premarital sex obviously normalized everything normalized right a, a total fulfilling of the passions which is basically what, what what the notion of freedom means today just do what you want do what you feel live according to your passions right? the erroneous notion of freedom state senator holly scalips scalip pc i don't want to let's just say senator holly a republican who was sent the materials by concerned parents shared the materials on Dropbox and said they are completely overboard with cringy details for young kids. What is going on here? This, if this is not satanic, I mean, what is? Even people who don't believe are starting to open their eyes right, to, this, to this evil, this blatant evil against our kids. You cannot, you cannot sincerely, right, in, in good faith, put your kids in public school. You can't. You can't public there. There is a well. There's a huge um, lack of enrollment in public schools. A lot of people are pulling their kids out of public school, and and thank God for that. This is it's absolutely madness. One of the proposed lesson plans for the fifth grade, called "It's All About the Hormones," well, it's all about the hormones. Requires students to watch an animated video. These are animated videos, cartoons, by the organization Amaze called Puberty and Transgender Youth. And this is a quote from there. Whether you identify as male, female, gender, queer or, queer, or something else, you're perfectly normal. And there are lots of ways to manage puberty so that it can be fu a fun, exciting time rather than a scary or stressful one, the video say, says. Again, it's all about my interior reality. Even words like pronouns, there you know, this proliferation of these new, of these new pronouns coming up, it, in, it deep down it makes no sense. You can't you can't invent a word. Right? A word is a symbol, like our bodies are are symbols of a reality, right? Of a reality of, uh, well, it, it refers to the concept, and the concept is a symbol of a reality, and that's how we can communicate. That's how we can understand each other because our words refer to things in reality. We go back to reality. I say chair, right? You all understand what I'm saying. But if the word is totally made up, and let's say it means a lot to me, uh, you can't communicate that. You can't force people to use a word that has no objective referent. Uh, and, you know, the, the theory of knowledge and philosophy, we learned that the criteria of truth is objective evidence, right? Not something you manipulate, not interior reality. Interior reality is actually oxymoron. Because reality is essentially what's extra mental, what's outside of my mind, right? Uh, it's, it's objective, right? We could say a, a subjective reality in a very broad sense, but no, reality is what's extra mental, what I conform to. So, um, you know, if I were to say a blaga blue, you know, blaga blue is this word. It has a really profound meaning for me. It means everything to me. Please use it. You would say, uh, okay, but what is it? I say, well, I can't show you what it is. But it's my interior reality. It's absolutely absurd. Absolutely absurd. So these pronouns, it, it's really just to, uh, um, you know, to cater to these, uh, the, these disordered passions. And it's, you know, we have to pray for these people because it is a demonic attack. These are real, these are serious problems. I, I know good families that are going through uh, situations where they're ha they have children who, you know, they feel a disconformity with their biological sex. I mean, I cannot understand that at all. But you know, I know of a woman who's uh, a distant family member. Her daughter said, "You know, I'm, you know, this is my uh, gender. This is my gender expression now, right? Not not conforming to her biological sex." And the mother slapped her. And she said, "No, it's not." <laughs> and that girl tells me, "Thank God, my mother did that to me. She took me out of this madness, right?" I'm not saying that this is right. Uh, this is like a blanket way that we should act towards. People who are suffering this kind of, right, this gender dysphoria. Um, do they call that anymore? Gender dysphoria, is that the correct term? I'm not even sure. But um, we definitely have to be compassionate. But at the same time, we have to know and not take this thing too seriously, right? This is something that is a disordered and it needs to be, uh, as you say, a nipped in the bud. If you feel, there's another quote from the video, the, the Amaze video. 
If you feel you want more time to explore how you feel about your gender before your body starts to change, and they have visuals here, it's important to talk with a parent. And the parent is always, you know, just um, going along with what the, the, the child feels, right? Supporting them in, in this uh, endeavor. Talk with a parent, counselor, therapist, or doctor about the feelings you have regarding your gender, the video states. After some discussion and counseling, you may be referred to an en endocrinologist. Endocrinologists specialize in hormones, and they're the most likely to prescribe puberty blockers for someone who wants them. Puberty blockers are medications that will stop your body from changing. And this is all portrayed in a positive light. All portrayed in a positive light. Another sample lesson plan for fifth graders pushes a maze videos concerning the subject of puberty and sexual anatomy. One of the videos called Masturbation, uh, Totally Normal, Masturbation Totally Normal is the title, teaches kids that masturbating up to a few times a day is a physically safe way to express sexual feelings, right? And this is a disorder, right? These natural, uh, you know, the, these natural uh, functions that we have, have their ends. They exist for certain purposes. So when we divorce these natural functions from their purposes, it's a disorder. We're doing harm to ourselves, right? We're not using, right, the sexual faculty in an ordered way, in a way it was meant to be used, right? We're using it, and that's that's why masturbation, masturbation is intrinsic evil. It's intrinsically evil. The animated video shows a boy dropping his pants and writhing under a blanket until he finishes and grabs a tissue. A similar video targeting girls promotes masturbation as a way to relieve stress and shows a young girl examining herself with a handheld mirror. You know, this is, this is absolute madness. You don't have to be religious to understand this is, you know, morality is, is, is based on nature, is based on our natural desires, which we build upon. We build morality on these natural desires. Um, uh, there's, there's disorder desires. There's disorder desires, right? The order desires are using things for their function, right? There's pleasure in, right, the sexual act in order to incite us, obviously, uh, for the propagation of the species, but it has to be used, it, it has to be, be used responsibly. God gave us this gift, not to be, to follow our passions at whim, right? This is very sad life. This is huge Lack of charity this is a hatred towards the transgender community. Hatred this is a pure hatred Could because it's divorced from the truth. While many people know their sexual orientation at a very young age, this is from the video quote, it is also common at this age to feel confused about your thoughts and feelings regarding who you find attractive. Again, the primacy of the sentiments here, the primacy of the, 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 the interiority, mm -hmm. the primacy of that. That's what dominates a driving force to sentiments, what we think about ourselves, what we feel. The video says, in fact, you may find yourself thinking about people of the same sex and of the opposite sex and be unsure. Right. A spokeswoman for Westfield Public School said last week that the teaching materials were a sample list of resources aligned with state policy and were not official policy. Okay. This is absolutely, this governor this governor who, he said something recently, I, I have to read it, I'm not sh uh, I have to read it, I'm not sure, but I believe it was in support of this. He's, he's absolutely, totally immoral, Governor Murphy, totally immoral. The presentation included a sample list of resources aligned to the New Jersey student learning standards to be considered as school districts work on revisions to the health and PE curriculum. Uh, Republicans say that the proposed lesson plans go too far. See, the Republicans maintain at least, you know, some type of morality. The Democrats are absolutely, they have lost total, total sense of morality. I truly think New Jersey has lost its mind, right? This is what uh, Holly, Republican Holly said to Skip PC. I don't want to butcher her name. Concerning the broader state, plan to the broader state plan to teach kids as young as seven about gender identity starting this fall former new york governor chris christie said it's a further indication of the crazy liberal policies of my successor phil murphy 
and Chris Christie's no hardcore conservative, right? In morally speaking, he's on the left of the progressive movement, says Christie. And this kind of stuff just should not be going on. But the fact is that the individual school districts in New Jersey feel empowered by the people who are now in charge of education. Phil Murphy, the governor of New Jersey, and his, you know, the people he's absolutely beholden to the teachers' union and the mayor in New Jersey. Those are the people who are running the show now, and it's just wrong. End of quote, uh, Chris Christie, governor, former governor. Governor Murphy, he did say that parents should absolutely have a say in their kids' education, but that some are using this as an opportunity to score political points and to further divide us and them. Us, us and them. And say that on behalf of the LGBT, LMNOP, uh, I add that myself, communities, is it, he, he is blaming those who oppose, right, as being politically motivated, right, trying to score political points, um, those who are in government. This is absolutely absurd, right? Like I said before, no, no morality. The Democratic governor pointed out that the new standards on gender identity were voted on two years ago by the state's Board of Education and will be mandated this fall but that he was absolutely open to hearing from the people who think the standards needed to be adjusted or altered. And I think he said something recently um, showing more approval towards this. This is, um, yeah, this is very unfortunate. I mean, we're living in a, uh, in essentially a clown world, right? The emperor has, has no clothes, right? As, as the story goes, there is, there's, there is a, um, there was a queer editor and writer from the Washington Post named Kat Jer Jersik, I believe it was. And he said um, that uh, he asked in, in, in the Washington uh, the Post opinion piece, why can't cisgender people be semi-normal about this? Cisgender meaning normal people. Well, simply because this, this is not normal. Normalcy is according to objective standards, right? The... A lot of the, the arguments of the transgender community, LGBT um, communities, they point to exceptions to show, to normalize transgenderism, like intersex, where intersex doesn't exist, or um, um, Afro, no, 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 I'm using the wrong word here. The, um, oh, what's the word? With the two sex organs, it would come to me that some people are born with both the female and male sex organs, uh, hermaphrodite, hermaphrodite, born with both sex organs, uh, organs, but they do have a clear XX or XY chromosome, right? So that is not even an argument. First of all, it's a rare anomaly, a genetic anomaly. And second of all, they are male or female. So it doesn't exist. It's not normal. It's not normal to reject one's biological makeup. It's not normal to pump one's body full of hormones and attempt to assume a new gender identity. It's not normal to undergo surgeries to alter one's sexual organs. Until recent scientific discoveries, such actions were not even possible or were fraught with tremendous health risks. Right? Like, the, like the man who had an artificial vagina and it infected, right? He was having sex with other men. And it infected, first of all, it's painful as hell. And it, and it, it, it got infected, obviously. And it's not a natural organ. Indeed, these all reflect the repudiation of human nature at its most simple, essential level. I'm telling you, with this growing of the artificial, you know, the proliferation of the artificial, <laughs> there's gonna, it's just human life is on the line, right? There's a war against nature. And even the whole notion of life wants to, is they're seeking um, the overall, when I say they, I mean uh, the mainstream view, right? The mentality of the times are seeking to reassess the whole notion of life, right? Shifting it from the natural way as, as we know it to an artificial, right? Or seeing artificial just take over, right? You can just, uh, you literally become who you want to be on a metaphysical level, physical and metaphysical. Indeed, these all reflect a repudiation of human nature at its most simple essential level. Nor is it normal to demand other people invest a huge amount of energy to ensure one's identities and various forms of self-expression are understood and appreciated. 
In the past, when meeting a stranger, say a new professor, colleague, or a fellow passenger on a train or airplane, one might have offered a name and perhaps where one came from and what one did for a living. It was straight, simple, straightforward, and collegial. But now, right now you present your pronouns, right? And uh, I work at college, and you see even online classes, a, stu a student's name, and under their name you see their, their pronouns, right? This is absolutely absurd, absolutely absurd. There's like Z, sir, uh, new pronouns, and again, no referent in reality. I want to show you a study. I don't want to make this video too long, but I do want to show a study. And this is a study from 2000. Okay, I, want to, I found the study. I want to show the study of, um, it's from a Pediatrics, American Academy of Pediatrics. It's a, a serious study from November, the 1st of November, 2019. Now it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. So overall, I'll just tell you what, what it says overall, then I'll, I'll read it more in detail. That TGAs, which are transgender adolescents, are much higher. Uh, they just have higher odds right, of, of, um, of doing self-harm and of suicide, right? There, there's higher suicide rates, there's higher desire of suicide, there's higher rates of self-harm than the cisgender, than there are in cisgender adolescents. So I'll read a little bit more in detail. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among adolescents in the United States. That in itself is, is absolutely hard to believe. Adolescent suicide rates have increased over the past two deca decades. It is indicated in emergent evidence that transgender adolescents, adolescents with true gender, they, they define what TGAs are, transgender adolescents are at a higher risk of suic uh, suicidality when compared with cisgender adolescents. In initial studies, 34% 34% of transgender adolescents report experiencing suicidal ideation during the past year. A little over one third. 61% report experiencing suicidal ideation during their lifetime. They're pondering suicide at least once during their lifetime. No, it doesn't say at least once. Just reporting, experiencing, thinking about suicide. 61%. And 30% to 51% of transgender adolescents report at least one lifetime suicide attempt. Now it's like 50%. This is 2019 when this stuff was, you know, um, coming out, becoming more mainstream. I mean, now it's much more mainstream, but it's worse now. A lot of these studies are suppressed, by the way. Furthermore, over half of transgender adolescents report engaging in non-suicidal self-injury during the past year. Over half uh, self-injury, non-suicidal self-injury. That is absolutely, just let that sink in. Elevated rates of suic suicidality likely result from disproportionate amounts of psychosocial stress, including victimization experienced by TGA. And there's probably some truth to this. Um, you know, the lack of acceptance. Um, you know, th there is uh, you know, a growing homicide rate towards transgender. I don't even know if these studies, these studies seem to be kind of slanted. Um, I haven't seen any serious study on the homicide, the growing homicides of transgender, uh, towards transgenders. But, um, uh, this is totally false. I mean, obviously, uh, the problem is interior. The problem is there's a dis there's a disorder there, right? We cannot exteriorize this. We cannot exteriorize the causes of this these these suicide rates. The experience of discrimination could be more prevalent among TGAs who have widely disclosed their gender identity to others. Okay, there could be some truth to this, but there's it is no way that a total acceptance of um, transgender adolescents are going to are going to normalize this. No, this is, this is false. And actually, there are studies that counter this conclusion, right? Um, there, there are studies that counter this conclusion that this being the cause of, because actually in places where they're more accepted, the suicide rate is, is just as high as more, you know, more liberal places like the cities compared to, um, you know, more red, you know, uh, redder areas like, um, uh, you know, 
rural rural areas or conservative areas in general, they're they're still the same. There's not a disparity there with the suicide rate. So that kind of goes against uh, the cause. But let us let us let that sink in. That is that is amazingly high. That's amazingly high. And let's pray for them. You know, let's pray for the transgender adolescents, right? These young people who are, you know, when I was younger, I dressed as a woman for, for Halloween. You know, we think it's funny. But now people start to, you know, take children too seriously. And and and, and that does them damage, right? It does them damage. All right, well, let us pray for them. I'll end the video here. God bless. Take care. And uh, again, don't forget to subscribe and click on the like button and share and all that good stuff. Take care. God bless.